what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be briefly taking a look at the date picker component in swift ui so what is that component basically it lets you select a date as the name implies and there's a couple of different things we'll look at uh, how to basically get this calendar showing up like this how to specify the date ranges the title, we'll also look at how to add this time selection. We'll take a look at how to make it this uh, look like this, basically where you have to tap this to open up the picker. This one is constrained to only be a time selection, whereas this one is a date picker. And of course, these components all look beautiful in both light mode and dark mode. So pretty short video today, but definitely some pretty cool stuff. So let's get started by destroying that like button. Always helps out every video and the larger channel. Get excited if you're not new to the channel and i've been following along or even if you're new destroy the subscribe button while you're at it get ex ready get excited let's talk about some date pickers in swift ui quick pause before the video this video is brought to you by iosacademy.io head on over to check out the newly launched tiktok and swift ui courses learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and we're gonna title our project Swift UI Date Picker. Make sure your lifecycle and interface are both Swift UI. Go ahead and give it a continue. We'll save it to our desktop. And let me start by expanding our Xcode window here as well as hitting resume on our canvas on the right hand side to load up our preview. Now date pickers are new to Ooh. iOS 14 and they're super, super simple to make. So once our preview loads up here, we're gonna get straight to it. So I'm gonna first actually uh, make this uh, dark mode over here by hitting this button, opens up this panel. I'll change this to dark. And uh, let's, let's add a date picker, so cool. So I'm gonna add a navigation view to just wrap everything to make it look a little nicer. And then in a vertical stack, we are gonna add a date picker. So how do date pickers work? Well, like I said, it's super simple. You create a date picker, open up the parentheses for the initializer, and you're gonna see a bunch of options here. And the one that we kinda wanna work with is the title key, the selection, uh, in range, and then you also have uh, components here. So let's go ahead and do this one, and we'll talk about each of these pieces. So the very first thing is the title of the picker. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, this could be a trip date. Let's say you're building an app to allow the user to, you know, book a trip, a flight, perhaps. The next thing is going to be the uh, bindable property that the date kind of. Uh, sets itself to since we're working in Swift UI. So we're gonna say dollar for binding and this is gonna be date. And I am gonna come all the way up here and add a state property for date. And by default, it'll be equal to date. The third parameter here is basically what components do you wanna show? You can show date, hour and minutes. Um, so we're gonna just do date to begin with. And there's actually another parameter in here that uh, looks like we didn't get with the autocomplete, so let's go ahead and add it. And uh, that is in, I believe, and that's the range. So we're going to say uh, the user can pick anything from now uh, into the future. Now let's not forget to add our comma there, and I believe that's the proper syntax, even though we added it. But let's go ahead and hit try again on the right-hand side over here. And uh, let's see if we start seeing our uh, date picker option. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to load up. While it does that, let me add a title to this uh, V stack as well with the navigation title modifier. We'll say select dates, just like that. And clearly our preview is not cooperating. So there is that. And there is our uh, option to select a date. So I'm also gonna add some padding so it's not flush to the edges of the screen. And we're gonna hit this live preview option and let's go ahead and uh, tap on this Jan 22nd, 2021. And uh, just like that, you see that we get our date picker and it's looking pretty cool. And we can select basically any date in the future. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. We can keep swiping uh, forward. It looks awesome. We can close it. So that's a basic date picker. So now let's, let's do a couple more things. So 
we saw in here, we can select either a date or we also have an option for an hour and minute. And if we go ahead and change that here, you'll see 7.56 a.m. Uh, because we are using the current date and time as the default for our binding. But if we go ahead and tap it now, now you'll see the user has the option to select uh, you know, just an hour and uh, uh, basically a time, right? So the minutes, a.m. and p.m. The other thing you might be wondering is why is this component white since we're in dark mode? Uh, that's a finicky aspect of the preview. If you run this in a simulator, it'll actually be the appropriate color. So cool, that totally all makes sense. What else? So we added a padding modifier. So you can add this into an inline uh, item into like a form if you have, a, you know, uh, maybe you have a trip start date and a trip end date. But what if you wanted to actually just show the whole calendar, calendar here in its own right? What you can actually do is you can add another modifier called, I believe, date picker style. And there's a couple different styles you can work with, but we're going to work with graphical date picker style. And this basically just shows your picker in its entirety here. Now we have it selected um, to be date components for hour and minute. Um, so we're going to go ahead and change this back to date and you'll see the whole calendar pops up. And actually now it decided to cooperate and be in, uh, in dark mode. So that's how you would do that. And the last thing I'll mention here is, uh, rather the last two things is right now we could pick between date, hour, and minute. But what if we want all three of those? Um, now what we could actually do is get rid of this last parameter because its default value is allowing the user to select uh, both both the time and hour and minute as well as the date. So here you see we have a calendar up here and then right down here we have the hour and minute selection. And the last thing that we'll mention is right now we said the range that the user can select in is uh, today which is just a basic date which by default gets allocated to the current time. Uh, dot 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 meaning anything from now moving forward if we move the dot 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 to the, for the range before the date, you'll see we can pick anything from now where this blue circle is in the past. And of course, you can also uh, you know, supply in custom ranges. So we can say date, uh, and we can, let's say, adding a time interval of, I'm just gonna make up a random large number. And looks like that's uh, about, let's see, it's about eight days there. So I can pick between now and uh, about eight days in the future. So definitely, Super simple component to integrate, pretty integral to a lot of different apps, uh, as you can imagine. Um, birth date selection, trip date selection, if you're creating an event, if you're creating a calendar, you know, what have you. Um, we can apply any other modifier to it, just as you would with anything else for a frame, a background color, um, padding, sizing, anything your heart so on desires. So that's all I've got for you guys in this video. Uh, shorter video than usual. Definitely give the date picker a try. If you haven't destroyed the like button, make sure to do so as always for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below if you have any questions. What do you guys think of Swift UI? What do you think of this component? And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe while you're at it for daily Swift and iOS uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.